guys, it's Fana, and thank you so much for watching. Today, I'm doing fan art, which is something that I very rarely do or have time to do. But, um, this is a rather old sketch that I did for my friend Kanta for a Christmas present. Uh, her favorite Studio Ghibli movie is Ponyo. And I had never seen it, but I decided to doodle the two kids from it. And I fell in love with the sketch even though I had never seen the movie and I was like um I'm sorry you don't get the original you can have this uh photocopy of it sorry not sorry it's mine and then months later I found the um the sketch I was like huh well you actually have some free time right now so you haven't done markers in a while so why don't you color this so I decided that I probably should watch the movie so I found the movie through some uh different ways because I can't I couldn't find it anywhere like well online like I found it on uh Amazon Prime but it said it was unavailable even though it was available on Prime it said I wasn't allowed to watch it at all. Like, I couldn't even buy it. I couldn't use my Prime account. So that was kind of odd. But anyway, I fell in love with this movie. It was so cute. I definitely now one of my top five Ghibli movies, if not my top three. I am so glad that I sat down and decided to watch it because I just, it was so pure. It was so pure and cute and adorable. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with how the sketch turned out, even though having never seen the movie, and then I, I actually didn't end up changing anything. I, I ended up uh, adding things to the background because I wasn't sure what to do with the background, but having never seen the movie, I was very happy with how I interpreted the characters. Something that did mess me up, though, is that the color that would have been absolutely perfect for Ponyo's dress was missing. Like, I have it recorded on my color swatches, and the space was empty in my markers, but it's gone. I don't know where it is, and, um, my roommate was laughing at me, because she's like, what's the big deal? You have 10 million other markers. I was like, you don't understand! It's gone! And after spending money on these markers, I want it! But she just laughed and, like, walked away. I was like, fine. So I tried to do this technique where I would darken the lighter color by pressing the tip of the darker color to the lighter marker and that worked a little bit but then I decided to just add the dark the too dark color and blend it in which worked some the um the shading is a little harsher or more crisp than I would have wanted but you know whatever floats your boat ha boat boat theme ha 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 um the two characters were so precious oh my god Guys, you have to watch this movie if you can find it, which apparently it's, it wasn't very fun to find, and it was buffering the entire time. But, uh, I actually have a little interjection message for you guys, uh, because there might be some missing footage that's my fault. Okay, so this is when I interject and explain a couple things. Um... Don't do as I do, and first off, not check to see if your camera's battery is full. Um, I don't understand how it isn't full, because I will literally charge it after I use it, and then when I finally have time to sit down and work on traditional work, I'll pick it up and it's dead. And I just like, why? Why? Anyway, that's my fault. Um... Another thing that's my fault is while the camera is actually charging, I have this nasty habit of, well, I actually have time to sit down and do artwork, so I need to use this time. So I will continue to work on the piece while the camera's charging and I'm not recording. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, I'll be like, oh, I'll just, I'll work on this little piece and no one will notice that it's done. And then I'm like, oh, but I could do this while it's charging and let me do this. And before I know it, um, some of the line work's done. The eyes are colored. 
I don't even remember what else I finished in this piece before I started recording again, but that is why there is a gap in the um, process. That's on me. I apologize. I will try to be less impatient, but I actually had time to draw, so I was trying to make these. Uh, anyway, there's my excuses. You want to watch the rest of this, so uh, bye. Yeah, so there's that. Um... <laughs> Don't do as I do, like my other video self said, my non-voiceover self. <laughs> I get so antsy and I, I have very little free time, so when I actually do have free time, I try to use it to its maximum. That was not what I wanted to say, but that, that works. I haven't drawn children in a very long time, so trying to get those bodies um and like it still have it be my style but like because I think in canon they're five-year-olds um I think that I ended up it, it worked out I think I did I done good kid I done good but I wanted to incorporate one of Ponyo's sisters um, little goldfish at the bottom, and then, um, the toy boat that they enlarge in to, um, I almost said fly. That is not what they do to, um, ride around when the waters flood. I also tried very hard to reflect the colors of the characters onto the water, because, um, that's something that I'm trying to work on more is my backgrounds and how all of that is incorporated. I decided to um, include the moon, which it's not a huge part of the storyline. Um, Ponyo's dad was freaking out about it because, uh, like, I think it was going to crash into the earth or something because the tides were too strong now. But anyway, I was using a reference of the moon. I do like how it turned out. It, I, it's, it's cute. I think it's fun. Speaking of Ponyo's dad, though, he was my favorite character. Well, they all were amazing characters, but he... I don't know why, even though he was technically the villain of the story, even though he wasn't actually a villain, he... I, I loved his design, I liked how sharp his features were, and I think I wanted to do um, fan art of him, him just, just him, because I loved his design so much. I also just liked him as a character, just as, like a dad who was trying to do what's best for his kids, particularly like this troublesome little girl. And I just, I felt, I felt bad for him um, because even like parents are doing the best they can. They really are guys. Like there are some crappy parents out there, but like there's not a rule book. They don't, there's not a how to to parent. And a lot of times parents are just doing the best they can. Uh, something that I do like is that, um, oh, what's the name of the little boy? <sighs> I can't remember. Um, he is standing on the water, and Ponyo is kind of floating above the water, like she does at the very end where she jumps into his arms and is kind of floating in midair for a second. And I decided that I wanted to incorporate the tops of the trees that are seen at the beginning or at the end of the movie and again trying to reflect the colors of the trees into the water but all in all I I really like how this piece turned out it it makes me happy like I it's like been really stressed lately Ve like it's uh, there's a lot going on in my life and to sit down and actually find time to watch something that was so sweet and there was like nothing like bad or crude or there, there wasn't any violence or language or anything else it's just something that was meant for families and something that was just so wholesome and wholehearted and I, I really love this movie guys you should definitely see it uh, I wanted to mask off the sides so I could get some crisp edges because I really liked how the background would be um, crisp on top with very um, uniform white borders, but then the bottom, the water kind of fades away and doesn't fill up the entire bottom of the piece, which 
I don't know. That's something that I personally liked. If I had to fix anything in this piece, which whenever you see something that you do, you always there's something you can always improve upon. I think what I would have improved upon was um, spend more time on their hands, especially Ponyo's, and the placement of her arm. And I also would have darkened the sky in the background a little bit more. I tried sketching out the clouds because um, Miyazaki has some gorgeous like cloud shapes and such, and I couldn't get the shapes right, so I tried doing um, some very, very loose like outlines of clouds in the background, which I'm not a huge fan of, and maybe I would have been if the background itself was darker. But ah, look how crisp the edges are. They look so fabulous. I um, decided to go around each of the um, figures with a white gel pen to make them pop a little bit more. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but when we go to a close-up later on, it's a little bit more apparent. Just added little details here and there with like the outline and some water ripples and leaves in the tops of the trees. But this this was good for me. I really am glad that I found the sketch and that I was able to um, to do this. I, I definitely needed this in my life. So I, I'm really glad that I found the time and the energy because sometimes, a lot of times, you just need to decompress. Find time for yourself. Find time to watch like little kid movies and just enjoy yourself to the entirety. But if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. I hope you have a phenomenal day and keep being extraordinary. Bye!